This episode covers days 22 to 33 of my Bush Early Gold Tomato germination experiment. So as you can see, the growth has been rather robust. It's beginning to look like a small forest now. So here's the fuzzy stem that prevents insect predation to cotyledons and at each node is, you know, kind of an alternating leaf pattern um, with these petioles containing many leaflets, which we're accustomed to thinking of as leaves. And here's a seedling in the mix. So the growth rates are pretty different. Like this one just came out of nowhere. And, you know, I have to remove that seed husk if it doesn't fall off in a few days just to help it. Uh, here's another one that still has a seed husk on. Here's a look from an understory point of view looking up you know, at the canopy, so to speak. And it's always interesting to get different viewpoints of my plants. So here's a closer look at all these lush leaflets that form a leaf. You know, I think there are, I guess, five of them, if I'm not mistaken, that contribute to a, a leaf. So this structure is quite different from all the other garden plants I've been growing. Tomato plants are notoriously attractive to all kinds of insect predators and parasites. Uh, these are spider mites. The uh, little black dots you see are probably the dead ones that I killed. And that's the leaf damage. They suck the juices out of all these plants. And basically they spin webs to prevent predation. They're kind of like spiders, but they're not really spiders. They're mites and they're parasites. So eventually they'll kill all your leaves. And I've had horrid infestations starting with my sweet potato vines. My honeydew vines have been heavily infested from almost the beginning. I just didn't realize it. And now my tomato plants are infested. You know, the ginger and the yellow onion seem remarkably resistant to these little pests. So here's another view a few days later. But, you know, things could go up in flames pretty quickly. I mean, this whole thing... You know, 21 plants could just crumble away due to insect pestilence very, very quickly. One fertilized spider mite female can produce 1 million offspring within one month. So that's how damaging they can be. And they like to hang out on the undersides of leaves. And, you know, everything will look great like this until one day you start seeing mottled, you know, leaves on the edges. So I suspect the soil here was originally safe. Um, maybe it's from a new bag of potting mix, but you know, the first big bag I had that probably had a lot of spider mite eggs or spider mites living in it, and they've crawled over since I've been spraying the other plants with, you know, pepper spray uh, based on habanero and you know insecticides. And so after the habanero-based homemade pepper spray failed, I tried, you know, this beta cyfluthrin based insecticide, and that did nothing to these spider mites. And then. Currently I'm trying pyrethrin based insecticides. Pyrethrins are a pair of organic molecules extracted from uh, pyrethrum plants which are in the chrysanthemum genus. So this is a view a few days later and you know they just keep getting bigger but you know if I didn't halt that advance of spider mite action you know this whole thing would have just been toast by now. So um, I'm paying close attention to see if there's more damage. But so far it seems good. I seem to have kept them at bay by nipping this in the bud early. Pyrethrins are neurotoxins for insects but don't do much to humans. They degrade very quickly in open air and water. So it'll be gone pretty soon but it still has a repellent effect and we'll see over the next episode if it actually keeps these bugs at bay.